Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to a very special session on uh, Tata Steel Kolkata Literary Meets Zoom and Live Sessions Webinars, a word we've all come to fear. The other thing that we are wondering about whether we should be scared of or not be scared of or try to decode is the new film on Netflix, Bulbul. Bul. And it's an absolute pleasure to have old Kolkata literary meet hand Rahul Bose. <laughs> Anita Dutt, who was supposed to be at the festival a couple of years ago. I think you got uh, stuck with this film. I was going to shoot this film, which is why I could not make it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the woman who has hypnotized all of us, <laughs> Tripti. So welcome to all of you for this special session on Mint Fresh Bulbul, which has all of us talking about it all, all, over, all over India and abroad. I believe Rahul told me it's uh, trending in four or five countries, right? Mm. Okay. So we have one Rahul here. He sadly couldn't bring his twin along. So <laughs> come to Rahul. Or we should be thankful for that, actually. <laughs> so uh, before we come back to Rahul, I thought I'd start with Anvita. Anvita, it's, an, it's a very interesting film. I would say that a lot of my friends have loved it. A lot of my friends have had problems with it, but nobody has been indifferent to it which is something I think any filmmaker would want, especially with their first film. So what made you think about this Chudel, Shakchunni, Petni, Petni. Yakshi <laughs> in the South, of a movie which deals with, which deals with a witch in a way, a, a she-devil, a devil woman? So I think uh, when I started writing out, it was just 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 a story. The um, themes and all these uh, worlds that I was creating started seeping into it. Uh, took me also by surprise. Um, I shouldn't have because I love fantasy, always have. Uh, I'm a reader of fantasy. I'm actually more of a reader as uh, Rahul and uh, Tripti, <laughs> whom I'm trying to convert desperately. And many of my friends will tell you, they look at me askance because they will talk about uh, film greats and I'll be like looking slightly vacant and vapid at that point in time because I don't, I haven't watched much. I'm, I'm more of a reader. Uh, so I think all the stuff that I've read and all the stuff that fascinates me has crept into it. And also the fact that, um, like you said, the Yakshi or the Petni or Chudel, uh, things that little girls are called in the corridors of their homes or school or playground uh, when you are not uh, behaving according to the norm, the set norm. Uh, I think somewhere that had a, had a uh, you know influence on, on had an influence on me, and the fact that uh, these demonic uh, forces are usually women. And, um, and their genesis is kind of um, always an act of violence that leads to a regular woman becoming a demon. And that really fascinated me. The origins of demons fa fascinated me, has fascinated me always. And so I guess uh, the kind of story that I was telling, uh, this, this theme had, had to happen. What with my fascination with... Uh, the supernatural. Yeah. So uh, one of the, you know, it's, it's got a fable like fairy tale qual quality to it. But there's an underlying question which uh, young Bulbul asks right at the start. Vash kya hota hai? So in many ways, that question and its answer, how it unfolds is Bulbul. So you, you've spoken about the norm, the need to conform. So uh, there's a, there's, there's a layer of anger, I would say. It, it's, a, it's a cool anger at the bottom. You know, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not an angry film, but there is a sense of a controlled rage in it. So was, was that a studied, uh, you know, we'll come back to the cinematography and everything that added to this controlled rage, but the, the thought, how did that uh, stay with you through this film? I think there is there is the rage, uh, like you're saying, a very quiet rage that is a part of the collective uh, that that is there. But also, funnily enough, Rahul and I was ever in fact talking about it last night. 
and he was saying that uh, you know it's all things you as well this film other than the craft which is um, he said many th nice things but one of them was also rage he said you have this very quiet i'm witnessing things unfold but i'm angry kind of a rage and i think uh, uh, compliments aside that rage those extra pretty thing is 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 sometimes needed sometimes needs to be felt no i uh, meant rage as a compliment uh -huh. mm -hmm. I, i like it it's nice <laughs> it's uh, deeply attractive uh, so yes so that rage is also a uh, personal rage which again uh, your stories are what you know what you feel so i think that is that's why and uh, rahul pointed it out and today you have so it's quite interesting that two consecutive days this has been mentioned but uh, yes the rage is there quiet rage is there okay so coming to tripti uh, this is a movie which a lot of us got to know you through so it's not yeah. your first film so to translate a very complex character and uh, you know this is my understanding i'm not a film expert but i would imagine a filmmaker who reads a lot who has whose film is you know she's worked it internally it's not it's not a, a typical mainstream film where everything is explained to you there are many layers so how did you how how did you react when you first saw the script or the story i think before reading the script i had the narration from anvita on and that is the time when i first met her and she narrated it to me and she explained like this girl to me and i remember getting too excited uh, the minute i got out from the office i remember calling my mom and telling her i finally found something that i you know i was looking for an interesting script and i finally got it um but uh, and with obviously wanted to test me first before you know <laughs> giving me the role so we did a test the next day and there was this beautiful scene between bulbul and uh, indranil um uh, just me you know indrani would tell me aap khush nahi ho so that is the scene we did with uh, you know in the audition and uh, yeah i think i was you know i i really wanted to part but there was no news from the production house or from anvita or from the casting agency for for i think 2 3 weeks and i i really wanted it so i messaged the casting guy i said listen even if i don't get it just let me know and uh, i think he said yeah yeah i'll let you know like but then um, two weeks later i think i was at some award function and then anvita called me and she said hi bulbul <laughs> she didn't say anything she just said hi bulbul <laughs> uh, in in this tone <laughs> happened at a how happened at awards functions now that yeah yeah that, that i was breaking fact, about to go on stage yeah. and then she called and i was already like very nervous and then she said hi bulbul and i was like wow this is so sweet um and yeah since then it's just been um, a fabulous journey i think uh, me and anvita we worked together for good two months to um, you know build this character and you know build a story around her we spent a lot of time trying to understand this girl understand you know what her relationship is with all the other characters that are there in the film because i was told that this is a person who shares a different equation with all the other characters whether it is her husband indranil or her brother in law mahendra or satya or uh, you know uh, Her sister-in-law, Paul, which is Vinodini, played by Pauli Ram. So that is something that we worked on, and uh, I think Anvita is a person who does not believe in rehearsing for the scenes, um, and that really worked for all of us. She's someone who says, like, I will give you situations. You you think like your, uh, you know, you react to those situations as your character. So I think we spent those two months, uh, you know, thinking. I'm for I, I'll speak for myself. I spent those two months thinking like Bulbul walk. trying to walk like bulbul talk like bulbul and that you know when you do that continuously for like two months or three months then a part of your character aa jata hai wo aapke andar so that is something that you know it was a very different exercise for me i've never approached any character like this before um so this you know all of this really helped me understand the character and the story really okay so uh, was that the same process for you as well rahul you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> because Tripti told me that it, you know she was it was like situations situations were thrown at her. You've said this in other interviews as well, and it was yeah. uh, you know your reaction to them. Now for a stalwart like you, firstly, did you scare Tripti with your yeah, your experience? <laughs> <laughs> I 
There's no point covering your face. <laughs> you have to confess. <laughs> it has worked before. It has worked before. Listen, first of all, Tripti was offered this role when she was about to go up on stage and collect an award. Let me tell you when I was offered the role. <laughs> I was, people know, I mean, I'm better known as a fabulous dancer. So I was <laughs> dancing in the 14th row of a Hindi movie uh, for a song sequence that was set in the jungles of Africa. And it was uh, very, very uh, uh, hot. And I was dancing on the 14th row and my, and we all had these leopard skin little things to wear. And my mobile phone our was turn stuck. to cover our faces, yes. <laughs> and my mobile phone was stuck in a place where I can't mention because this is a very respectable uh, literary meet and, a, and you're a very respectable person. So, And then the phone went off and uh, while the song was going on and the director was shouting at me and there was a megaphone and in the middle, I, I heard things like, hello, Injaneel, hi, Mahindra. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? Please, I'm struggling to make a living. I was getting, I was getting a, a very well paid. I mean, I, I mean, uh, it uh, lasted me two, three hours, the pay that they used to give me there. So, uh, but that was the 14th row of a luxury liner song. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, what was the question? It was a very interesting question. Yes. Um, How did you come to this role? <laughs> um, so, she... I think from what I've heard them speak, um, they didn't think one of their very, very close colleagues, Anshay Lal, who made Hillary, he's a director and he's the creative producer on this film, suggested my name for Indraneel and Mahindra. Anvita, correct me if I go, if I say anything wrong here. And mm -hmm. Anvita and Karnesh thought it was very interesting, but they said, will he do it? Um, perhaps they thought that uh, it was too small a role, I, I, I don't know. So when I was offered this role, these roles, first of all, I realized that it would be the same face on screen. So in terms of the impact in the audience's head, the actor would, would be the same. And if you look at each of the roles, they're not spectacularly massive roles in that respect, but they are the triggers for everything that happens to Bulbul. So how can you forget that, right? So, I mean, uh, you, can hit, you can hit six sixes as uh, Gary Sobers did, but everybody forever will remember Malcolm Nash as being the bowler who bowled to Gary Sobers. So in that respect, uh, using a cricketing uh, idiom which has gone so far over Anvita's head, it's off screen. Um, I, got it. I got it. Yeah, I know you did. Um, <laughs> so, so then I read the script. And uh, I just called her and we talked and talked and talked about the script. I mean, Anvita, you can, you can take the story on from her. I, yes. I really want to because, um, so we, I sent the script to him. We mailed it to him at about eight in the evening. At around uh, quarter past 10, I get a message from Rahul saying, hi, Anvita. Um, so uh, can we have a chat? And, this uh, is Rahul Bose from the 14th row in the Congo. Basically. Yes. <laughs> uh, liner. We saw yes. it. Uh. Yes. Can we have a chat? And so I thought he was just calling to say that, oh, I, you know, I've been approached for this thing. I've been given a script and what is it? And I'll read it. I'll get back to you. You know, that sort of stuff. But he'd already read it by then. Uh, it's, it had been barely two hours and he had read it. And I think for half an hour he just spoke about the script he did not talk about the role he did not talk about the character he did not talk about himself he spoke about the script and what it made him feel and how moved he was by it and i was just i was so moved because he was talking about it with such love the kind of love that i have for my script you know as a writer of the script and he then asked me this question which blew me away. He said, are you sure you want me? Are you sure you think that I can do this? I was so shocked. I did not know what to say because I expected him to say, after saying all of these things, lovely things about the script to say, but you're a first time director. I don't know if you know, you'll be able to pull this off and I'm nervous about that or whatever. 
let's talk, tell me how you think you're approaching the film. And he didn't say that. I mean, he, with such grace and such humility, he, he asked me that question that I was like, uh, I, I don't care how this happens now. This man is doing my film. This actor is in my film. And the amazing thing is, Malvika, that grace and that humility he brought all the way to the set. Every day, he approached, when he came on set, he was, he would surrender to the role, to the film, to the director, that, you know, you felt, you felt so humbled by, by his humility and that by his love for the material that I just used to be so overwhelmed. I mean, I used to just look at him and be like, I, I should have cast him as Bulbul. Yeah. <laughs> Shuncho, Malvika, Malvika, <laughs> Banerjee, Shuncho, Grace, Humility. So my eyebrows, they shot up. They came out of your scalp and they went to Mars and came back when you said that. You can't give the game away like this. Huh? Anvita has a good impression of me. Shuncho, good impression of me. Please, can we conduct this show very, with very some decorum? So, in fact, that's what I wanted to ask Rahul. You know, you're, you're mad and madder or bad and badder in this movie. So you've always been this genteel, somebody who is looking, you know, wistfully at street, at uh, sex workers, <laughs> or falling in love with women who invariably <laughs> die. So you know, how did you? It, it's a role with a lot of uh, passion. I mean, it's it's an aggressor, transgressor's role. So uh, did that attract you to it as well? You've been the nice guy. And even when you're not the nice guy, you're like a weak bad guy. You know, somebody who doesn't have much personality, like in Dil Tara. So this guy has bearing, he has presence. I'm loving this chat. Yeah. I think Tripti, we should just listen. So yes, bad, badder, mad, madder. How did you approach the, you know, the two, the, 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 the two characters, the two, the terrible twins? I, I've never been insulted so much in just one question. <laughs> but anyway, I, I shall I shall try. Um, first of all, the first thing that flashed through my mind was all my Bengali relatives. Ki? Shele na rape korbe? Tapore murder korbe? Aish, gallo. So all the matrimonial columns and all the Bengali newspapers, very sadly, they had to cut off and you know and and to take back all the the ads they had put in. Hopefully that they could get their nephew or their grandson or whatever to get a, married a to somebody. Has come. We all love that little monster called Rahul Bose from Rajeshree. Wow. Now, um, <laughs> so listen, you have to play and you have to be, you have to play right, play truthful. I can't act, you just have to feel it. So it takes you to dark spaces. Even getting, even being forced to fillet a cop um, in I Am, to prevent being jailed because you're homosexual took me to a dark place of humiliation. This one takes you to a dark place of, of unbridled violence. We all feel like killing somebody on the road who is just, you know, who's, who's driving badly and stuff like that. But to actually explore those feelings, and of course, the joke is uh, that what were you thinking when you were beating? You know, who were you thinking of? I had. I had a plethora of people. I could have done 100 takes. Each of those shots were directed at somebody or the other. But on a more serious note, you just have to do it. And you have to find it. And it's there. It's there in New Mala. It's there in Anvita. It's there in Tukti. It's there in me. This push to the wall, this entitled, whatever the reason for the rage, or whatever the reason for or that's When it came to Mahendra, though, it was very different. There was no uh, intent. He's a 40-year-old man in terms of his going to the bathroom, defecation, uh, his uh, procreation, reproductive system, and his eating, like an animal. Rest of it is frozen at 10 or 8 or whatever. So when he clambers on her, there is a sexual arousal. And Mahindra has never been denied. He's the zamindar. He looks at the uh, tree and goes, um, and 20 mangoes will be brought to him, right? Or he looks and says, Gadi, and he's taken for a drive. So when Mahindra strides her, 
it is not with any kind of work that the actor has to do. It's the shift from the 10 year old or the nine year old to the 40 year old sexually aroused who has never been told Aisa nahi karte. Even if, if a 10 year old child drops a glass of milk, they will be adults because they know that something bad has happened, right? That's not happened with Mahindra. So uh, it, it, it doesn't take you to a dark space, not that far. What takes you to a space after that is when she breaks, when she dies, and she is her, her, his favorite member of the family. And he has a beautiful relationship with her, which you hardly see in the film, but it's there. And he knows that his guria has broken. The guria has broken. And far away in his 10-year-old brain, the gong goes off that something very bad has happened. And that's the run down the corridor and then and then. So in that respect, it was tougher playing Mahindra, but it was darker playing Indranil. So uh, what Rahul said is that uh, you have to find it in you, you know, whatever that space is. So Tripti, how did you find those layers, you know, the innocence at the start and then, you know, the break when you when that scream happens and then, you know, there's this glazed, yet there's this glow in your eyes and there's this smile which is eerie and uh, there and shouldn't be there but is there. So what, what did you discover within yourself when you were playing this role? So I think for me, is, um, uh, firstly, I think the, the preparations really helped. I'm glad that we had all that time to prepare for a character like Bulbul and I was told on the very first day that you're going to be playing two completely different personalities it's as almost one a person. double role as well yeah, it, it's almost like a double role for you also so uh, you know so for me I think uh, during those preparations me and Anmita we discovered very early on that I as a person I'm very close to the innocent Bulbul so it was easier for me to understand her physicality even you know on and her mental state uh, the difficult part was you know, to understand 25-year-old Bulbul's mindset, the transformed Bulbul's mindset, because I was told that she's a person who's very calm, a person who, you know, is, has many flaws, but, uh, you know, is, she's a person who's made peace with all of her flaws and, um, you know, a person who's complete in herself, like she doesn't even need a soulmate, maybe she's, she's her own soulmate in a sense. So for me, it was difficult because I don't think I am as um, evolved as the 25 year old Bulbul as yet in my life. Um, so we had to work, you know, really hard to, to get me to think like that person. And there's this acting coach called Atul Mongia. We uh, workshopped with him for a good 10 days. I did, you know, separate workshops with all my co-actors. I mean, separately. Um, and he gave me this very, um, you know, strange tool to understand Bulbul. He said, just focus on your breath. Um, change your breathing pattern because this is a person who's very calm and a person who's calm uh, you know breathes differently he uh, that person will breathe very slowly so initially I was like how is this going to help like how can I change my breathing pattern first of all and how is this going to help this is not going to help then he said just do it for two months you will see the difference on your own and that that's all I did that that was my only preparation to you know to be 25 year old person and uh, every time before shoot, on shoot, Anvita would come to me and say, just, you just sit in a corner, take your position. I'm going to roll the camera. I'm going to call action. You focus on your breath. You go on your breath, meditate. And that's what I used to do. Like that, that's, wow. that was our preparation. That, that's it. Nothing else. That's an incredible. Uh, so you, I mean, that's interesting to think that something like just breathing can just that, yeah. the, the, the tempo of your character in a way. So, Anvita, why was it set in Bengal? I mean, because I think in my you're... in my last life, I was I was a Bengal. <laughs> uh, I'm in love with uh, personally, just completely in love with Bengal. I uh, go this year; it hasn't happened. A with my uh, post production at the beginning of the year, and then the pandemic. Uh, but every year, I go to Calcutta. I eat, I buy saris, I go to places like Bailoom, I go to, I go to Marco, <laughs> I, I go to Triangular Park and uh, I pick up saris. It's my uh, pilgrimage because um, Bengal feeds me. 
the beauty, the food, the aesthetics of the place, the architecture, everything feeds me. I'm, I, beauty feeds me. So Bengal has that beauty. And um, so one is that, of course. Also, uh, it's a fairy tale. So I could technically set it anywhere. It could have, exactly. it's, it's a make-believe land kind of a thing. But I like I like uh, taking a slice of history, like, a, like you know, and squeezing it on to the story, just for a little bit of zest. It just adds that little thing of this, I recognize, this, I know. Also, Bengal of that period, specifically, again, had a fairy tale like quality to it. If you look at the architecture of that time, you, look you at, find that Rajbari, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Isn't it lovely? It's two and a half hours outside of uh, Kolkata. Um, I saw many, many places uh, when I went for my recce with my DOP and my production designer. We saw such beautiful places that we could have shot it anywhere. All the places were so beautiful. But this particular place for uh, A, the period was correct. It was late 19th century that it was constructed in. All the influences uh, are there. This is Bavali, basically. This is Bavali. But what I really liked about it, what spoke to me was that it was, uh, it was a prison. There's, it's like a box, you know, it's beautiful, it's ornate, it's gorgeous, <coughs> beautifully designed, aesthetic. Uh, there's only one door, it's a small door, you know, at the end of the film when you see Indranil walk in from the shadows of a very small door and he walks into the courtyard at the end of the film. Uh, that is it. So it's almost like these are walls that Bulbul cannot scale, however beautiful they might be. And if you see her childhood home, it was almost like a miniature replica of that house. So it's like um, they just made it insurmountable for her to escape. So all those things, I think, played a role in me choosing that particular place, that period. The beauty, the aesthetics in every little detail of that time was almost fairy tale like so and also when i first started writing the first ever image that came into my mind was uh, bulbul's feet retreating that time i didn't even know she was bulbul because i just woke up at night and the image in my head was two feet slightly dusty but with alta on them retreating under the sari in fear which is when indranil says do you think you need penti and like little mice her feet just hide and that's the first ever image or anything about Bulbul that came into my head. 3.30 in the morning, in 2011. And, mm. yeah. and that's the first image. And it, it, it had Alta, so um, that's it. Had to be Ringo. So uh, this, this movie's been with you and has been growing with you for a long time. Uh, a lot of references have been pointed out by very closely watching Bengalis from <laughs> Tagore. So were they conscious, you know, the scene of them, you know, of her swinging and uh, the picnic-like spot is very Charulata. There's a bit of Monihar. So, you know, okay, Monihar is, you know, there, there, there is a scene in Monihar where this uh, ghost comes in right at the end to, you know, meet her husband in different context of course so um, were, were these influences I mean were they just naturally there or were some like context of what you've been you know what you've liked I think uh, um, a lot of it would be subconscious yes to go yes I, I love to go I'm, I'm deeply influenced by uh, the way he wrote his female characters they were Beautiful, strong, yet so helpless. And there was a certain kind of hopelessness to them, uh, Nostonir specifically. And um, it's so, yes, all that has influenced me. Mm, Ursula Le Guin has influenced me, you know. So the kind of things that you read and the kind of characters that your favorite authors write, somewhere they start filling in the colors of the character that you are writing. Consciously, obviously, the, always the conscious effort is that you do not copy or, or do what someone else has done because you're trying to find, tell your own kind of a story. But yes, somewhere, uh, so strangely, that, that scene where you're talking about the swinging scene, we were supposed to shoot it in Bengal, but because of uh, 
bad weather, our dates got shifted. We had a storm that hit us. So we lost out on some actor dates. So then we shifted it to Bombay. It was being shot in a totally different setup where a swing would not have been there. When I went to this place, this orchard, which was on the uh, edges of a forest, and I was like, uh, it would be so lovely that, you know, these people have just stepped out for a picnic and this, this kind of a place would be so nice. And there was already a swing. There were children, the neighboring village children were swinging over there from the mango trees. And I was like, that would be so beautiful. That's so childlike and free and almost like Bulbul's childhood. I want to have her swing. And it so happens that people uh, are picking up on the thing that it's, it's possibly Charu Lata. And I'm flattered, I'm deeply flattered that I could, uh, my name was said in the same sentence as Tagore mm. or Ray. I think, uh, thank you for just that. Now, whether it is, it is a compliment or a criticism, but thank you so much. <laughs> just, just having your name said in the same breath is, is a blessing. But yeah, there are influences you don't even realize sometimes. Things that have happened to you, to other people, things that you've read. Paintings, I mean, art, everything. Yeah. Uh, Tripti, so this whole Bengali thing, now everyone is telling you, you look like a Bengali. Now, yeah. when a Bengali <laughs> says that, that is the highest compliment. Wow. So, uh, how did you, you know, kind of uh, inhabit that space and internalize you know, the body language. And there were two, you know, the, the second woman is almost, you know, with the way she puts her hand across and sits and, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a takur, not like a porobu, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so uh, how did you manage to internalize all of Anvita's love for Bengal? I think I just copied Anvita for the, the takur rhyme. The way look she's at, look right at the way she's sitting right now, now, like this. Yeah. <laughs> so I just copy her and I just like observe her properly every time and uh, yeah I think that's that's the only thing that I did for the 25 and as I mentioned before I mean I was just asked to focus on the character and on Bulbul and she didn't she never asked us to you know uh, take references she never asked us to watch Bengali films or look at how Bengali girls talk or walk she just said that you just become this person you just become this character and yes everything will happen automatically so that's what happened like I, I don't remember. I, I think I did watch this uh, show, Rabindranath Tagore short stories on Netflix. I watched this the, the first. Uh, okay, no, uh, I don't remember the name. It's but that was just it's a series that was done. Anurag Basu. He's also shot Choker Bali in that. I think. Yeah. Ah. But that was not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that was not not to draw any inspiration from the character or anything. It's just I just wanted to watch it, like just to know a little bit about Bengal and how Bengali people, you know, how, how they talk, what they eat, and uh, yeah, that that's it. So I'd I actually think, I just her copied a book to read. I'd given her a fat book to read. Oh she yeah, George Shanko. Uh, Shanko. And then I was, she must have been like, let me just watch a, watch a series. <laughs> I still haven't finished that book, but <laughs> by Aruna Chakravarti, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> I must tell Aruna about this. Okay, now Rahul, you've been a filmmaker as well, and one of the stunning things about uh, about Bulbul is the way it's shot. So I'll ask Anvita as well, but you know, putting on your filmmaker hat, and you know, somebody who's worked in cinema for so long. What, what talk us through that whole process of you know the colors used, the music. It's not that typical you know screechy door kind of music effect. You know it's it's just done in a in a really lush and very you know the colors. So what are your thoughts on how that added to the movie? Well, Anvita and I were talking about this yesterday. Um, I'm going to let her answer the more obvious aspects of the aesthetic choices of the film because not only is she the right person? But her answers are also uh, far more erudite and uh, eloquent than mine could ever be. Um, by the way, I should tell you that to focus for this, to prepare for this role, I focused on my breathing. <laughs> Not my breathing, my breathing. Like, who, where, where should I breathe? And I only go to, now I only go to Kolkata to buy saris. Anyway, so, um, I spoke to Siddharth Devan, the BOP of, um, of Bulbul, unprompted, after watching Bulbul the second time, 
once I'd seen it earlier before the film released and then I watched it later yesterday. You know, Mala, in 39 films I've done, barring Santosh Sivan, who is a genius with the camera and he directed me in Tahan as well as Before the Rains, I've rarely come across a DOP. Most DOPs will light it to look um, correct. Most DOPs will frame it to look, to help them to, 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 to go along with the narrative. Some DOPs will work on the meaning of the scene and how to heighten that effect to make the director's final product even more impactful. But very, very few DOPs will focus on the actor's intent, not the scene's intent. The actor's intent at that point and work to maximize that. It basically, and with Santosh, I also felt this. You have to act. You just don't have to act much. I mean, you act, you're acting, but it just gets magnified by this guy's work. So with Santosh, he's to keep one eye open through the lens and the other eye also, and the other eye open. I was like, Santosh, I've never seen that happening. He's like, this I can see what's happening in this in the frame. And this I'm looking at what I'm missing outside the frame. So if I miss something outside the frame, I start moving my camera around. You know, I'm like, what? That's crazy. He would watch rehearsals, scratching his beard, and then he would shoot, but he would start with my toes twitching because he felt that was the punctuation needed. Siddharth in Bulbul, the low angle shot, the mythic shot of Indranil uh, beating her against the Sita Haran painting. I mean, how gorgeous is that? However, however beautifully Meenal might have made the painting or Anvita might have thought of it, finally, Siddharth has to put it out and say, is this what you want? You know what I mean? And it's, it was just staggering. And he's talking to somebody who's a first time filmmaker. She might be a great lyricist and a writer, but she hasn't framed shots, you know, before. Then you have Siddharth doing this. I mean, I'm sure this is Anvita's idea. I'm, I'm not, both worked so closely. For me, they were peas in a pod. Bulbul's legs are broken and she's crawling back to her bed. And you feel that she's reached the bed because the camera is right there. She's reached the camera and the camera goes back. And you realize, man, she's got six feet more to go. And there's nothing in the script, by the way. That is mm -hmm. there in the script. Okay, fine. But there's nothing, and what I meant is nothing, there's no dialogue. There's nothing of that. There's sense. no dialogue. Yeah. You know? Or for that matter, when um, um, the, I was just giving him the example of uh, in, in the, it'll come back to me. But these are two examples of Siddharth's work where it's just, you, you know, you look like such a better actor. And this is outside of his contributing to the palette, contributing to the prestige, contributing to the aesthetics, which of course Anvita will tell you about. But I just wanted to make this one point, that this is a guy who really, he really understands what's going on through the actor's brain. That's incredible. So that's an actor's perspective to the way the film was shot. As a, as a filmmaker, as a director, you know, the colors, the, the sight of that pink moon, the... The, the exaggerated length of the hair of the, you know, the, the churel, all of that. If you can talk us through that. Uh, oh, there's so many things. Really, you want me to talk about everything? Okay. So, <laughs> uh, I always, uh, I wanted it to look like, that's what I told Divan and that's what I told uh, Meenal and Veera when we started off. My references were, were usually art. I, I said that I, because it's also period, right? I was like, I want it to look like a Ravi Varma painting. Especially his Uttam There's Naika. one behind you, I think. Yeah, there is one. Uh, the two, that one is just, then there is. Yes, yeah. The rest are in Mala's house. <laughs> the real ones. I have the prints. Uh, so, there's uh, Ravi, I said it has to look like a Ravi Varma painting. The Uttam Naika, especially. And, uh, I told him that I, I, I want it to be lit like a Caravaggio painting. I want uh, the reds from Caravaggio again. Caravaggio's use of red was so stunning. And uh, that's where it started off. Our first conversation ever was 
me telling them that it, my references for you are paintings. I will give you art references. I will not give you film references. Now we have to find a way of doing this. Where it has to feel, you can smell the paint when you look at the frame. So that is where we started off with. The moon, uh, the big moon, the Chudel jumping over the moon is just, um, the, to me, because that's where the kids are telling, the boys telling her the story. It needed to have that, how would the little girl visualize it? How would I visualize it? The little girl part of me would visualize it. So I, in fact, I remember because we shot it against green screen and that was done in VFX. I still remember and uh, lots of fun was made of it because uh, so I love art, I can't draw to save my life. So I made little stick figure boxes, like the box had the I still have it uh, on my script. But I made a box where I made a giant moon and trees at the bottom and a stick figure jumped over the back with log, log there. And we just did that. And the fact that it's pink, uh, because I kept saying it has to have this effect that it looks like a dream, that it's not real. And because it's going to get real, very real later on, this part needs to be like a dream. Uh, Divan came up with this idea, let's shoot it on IR. Let's shoot it on infrared instead of depending on post. Because I'm, I mean, I'm also not the person who will say, post me they cling it. Let, I said, let's do it in camera. Is there some way of doing it in camera? And he came up with this idea, let's shoot it on IR, on infrared. And then it'll just, it'll just transform. So a lot of what you see, the infrared is more or less how it looks is we just tweaked it in the post, you know, and then of course we added the moon and all of that. So yeah, those were the color palette choices, the things that uh, most, the saris and things like that. Uh, my references were my, my saris, which I gave, and she's in fact worn a few of yeah. them. So uh, the fact that I love Jamdani, so Indranil was wearing Jamdani, dhotis, and these are things that added to the opulence and the, the period of that film. Uh, so that was on the visual, this thing, and uh, adding to what Rahul said, it's it's so interesting, like Rahul as an actor felt that Divan was amplifying the performance. What I felt, I always call him my bioscope, because uh, it's all very well, because I, I prepped, I had my short breakdown ready, uh, in fact, uh, before I went for the even the tech recce, forget about the, the shooting the film. And I shot the entire film with my ADs on the iPhone while I was, I'd already done the short breakdown. But for him to take what I feel, it's all okay for me to write a shot that this happens. Like it says, the poker goes up. It's a phantom shot. The poker goes up slowly. He's reflected in the mirror. There's lightning. His hand goes up. And I showed it to, uh, I remember showing it to Vivani. He said, how slow does it go? And I was sitting doing my short breakdown. So I picked up my pencil and I showed him how his arm will move and how slowly it will go and what sound will come, everything. So I, have to, I had to tell him like how it almost burns out and becomes white. So I talk like this. I'm like all like, this is what it will be and the light will go like this and this is how slow it will be. And then he takes it. He takes what you think and you say and you write on paper and he does what he does to it. So what he's feeling that he, he amplified the actor's performance, I feel that he amplified every thought, every thought that I had, every word that I spoke in prep, every little shot that I wrote down in the short breakdown. And we prepped so hard. We worked so hard for about three, four months. Devan and I met every day. We were with each other whole day. So I remember just, the shot now when she finishes. I remember the shot. Which one? You know, when Indranil finishes beating his wife and he leaves uh, the, the, the house, and uh, it's raining. And uh, 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 Pauli says, uh, do you have to go? And she, she says, you know, Dr. Saab ko uh, wo bakshi de dena. And he opens his umbrella and he walks down the steps. And you cut to a top angle shot of the Rajbari. And you see this man walking down the steps. You just you don't see the man, you see the umbrella. You know, and there's rain course flying down uh, onto the umbrella. That tells you so much about what the Zamindar is thinking as he's leaving. That shot tells you so much. It adds to the performance of the character. When you watch the film, you, that's what you take away from this. It's not that, oh, look at this man in the middle of this huge mahal with water. It's you're your, your with the man as he's walking down. And he's, he's out of here. He's going, you know. And it's stuff like that which 
oh, cut to top angle shot. But somehow the magic of the way Amrit has cut it, the way they've used it, the way uh, Siddharth has photographed it, it's an amplification of the mood that uh, Indranil sets in that scene. That's fantastic. So, yeah, we are actually, sorry, I'm going to add to this. Yeah, so, it's Amrita, actually are you a... reading some paper or something? There's a, whenever you talk, there's a kar, 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 kar happening. Hmm. Are you hitting That's some? So... Are you, is it uh, bangles or something? Because somebody said audio disturbance in the comments. So I was wondering. Mine? It, sound is no, it's, it's not the quality of the audio. You're, you're no, now it's all right. Like, if you continue, it's all right. It must have been this. Is it yeah. this? Yeah, maybe yeah, this. It's the, ha, ha, it's the headphone wire. I'd rather be more, more comfortable than clear. Uh, so uh, that is actually, we, um, there's a Japanese painting that is there in Divan's house. And when we were working, I looked at that painting and I was like, first we just gushed about how beautiful Japanese things are. And then I said, uh, oh, oh, what a lonely man. So it was, um, it was just a man just walking down the street. Beautiful. You know, just a top angle, a beautiful, beautiful Japanese painting. And then later on, when we sat on the short breakdown of the film, that what stayed with me about that painting was the loneliness. You know, it's so sad. He's actually the bad guy. He's just done something terrible. And I was like, because I can't judge him, right? And that's when Devan and I were like, we'll do. We always called it the, 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 the Japanese shot because of that. Though it was not the same exactly, it was just, it was a shot of a street and a man walking down the street, but it looked so lonely and, and small and insignificant. So he was lonely and sad, but at the same time, he's also insignificant. Let's see what's happened to her show. Okay, we've lost Tripti, I think. She'll, she'll join back. No, it's part of my big plan. One by one, I'm going to exterminate people from this panel. Okay. There's just me, the whole screen is just me. 16 knees. Now, I was going to ask uh, Tripti, but till she comes back, Anvita, you know, there is this character of Sudeep, who is, in a way, the voice of enlightenment. You know, he's, he's the doctor and... Uh, he's the Brahmo Samaj guy. Yes, yeah, possibly. And uh, there are these three brothers who are, who are at various levels of in entitlement. So, uh, the, as, as Rahul said, the entitlement of uh, Mahendra is one of, you know, him being a special child and getting what he wants. Then there's the entitlement of Indranil, his dynamics with Binodini, he's the Thakur of the house. And then there is the entitlement of Satya, which is at a level lower, but it is still there. I mean, he, he is still very much the brother of these too, because he still uh, is constantly judging and fretting about uh, uh, Badi Bahu's behavior and uh, also very approving of uh, the, the penances of Binodini when he sees her as a... So, you know, in his mind, he is a, he's, he's a no-changer. He's not a pro-changer. So this, uh, you know, this dynamic. So Bulbul is caught between these two men she likes. One is an entitled figure, Satya, and one is uh, the voice of entitlement. So how did you, uh, how, I mean, how interesting. I thought Parambrata was fantastic as a doctor and Binodini was absolutely, you know, Pauli Dham is always an extremely nuanced performer. So she was looking beautiful and she acted beautifully. So how did you, uh, you know, kind of uh, write these two characters? As you said, in your mind, he's the Brahmo Samaj voice of Ram Mohan and the rest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. it's his back. Ah. So uh, if, you did, uh, if you tell us, uh, then I'll also ask the same question to Tripti since she's back. Because, you know, her dynamics change with these characters. So um, uh, with Satya, it was always, uh, you know, the... the, the He's your Disney prince, your, your, uh, the savior in the, in the usual fairy tales, he would save her, right? He is noble, he's kind, he's gentle, he's a friend. Uh, they've grown up together, there's kinship there. Um, he's also more evolved, he's educated, he's studied in England, and he's uh, supposedly the, the heroic figure. But... Uh, also flawed because A, uh, no one's saving this girl other than herself. That is something that I wanted 
very, very clearly to come across that uh, we do not wait for the prince on the white charger. We do it ourselves. Not to uh, uh, say that, that those, those people are bad or they are wrong. I'm not tarring everyone with that brush. But the thing is that intrinsic belief that, that, we, are, uh, that we are taught as we grow up that uh, the knight in shining armor. The knight in shi shining armor. It's going to happen. It's going to be this perfect, uh, um, you know, pretty pink fairy tale. Uh, that's not going to happen, uh, is what one thing. And the second thing is that sometimes, uh, like I was having this discussion with a friend of mine who said that, uh, you know, almost makes you question uh, are you a Satya or a Sudhi? Because on the face of it, you are saying the things, you are evolved, you're saying you're not threatened, you are the, the today's, the woke, the woke boy. And, uh, and, and it might not be true because your, your conditioning and your upbringing would have insidious <laughs> talons into your being and it'll, it's going to show up sometime or the other. Whereas Sud Sudeep, Dr. Sudeep A., um, because of the time period, I wanted the Brahmo voice, the outside of the walls of the Thakur <coughs> there was this movement that was changing, trying to change the world. Uh, and uh, it was a wonderful movement. And I wanted the only way, the only person who can enter the Zanana, the, I don't know the exact pronunciation, the Antar Mehal, the, the inside of the Thakur Bari is a doctor change in the form of a doctor, a new voice, a new man in the form of the doctor can enter this world. So I wanted him to come in like that. And to, I know men, men like that who are not at all threatened by a strong woman. They admire them. They are inspired by them. They're half in love with them because, I mean, the so-called female gaze, these men have it. And uh, he was that because I didn't want that all men are bad. They're all riddled with patriarchy and misogyny and um, all women are either victims or goddesses. So that was something. I know what's happening to you again. Next yeah. time she comes, you quickly ask her. I quickly ask her the question. Yes, I was waiting for you and then I'd ask her. The... I'm also giving long, long answers. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, so till she comes back, we may have to stop you in between this. You said you, uh, you know, we've got a question as well. Rahul has a, oh, so we might have to add or this is somebody giving me a message. Just one quick question. Mill on the Floss is a book, you know, which also came to my mind. Was little Maggie Taliva says, you know, what is the big, what is the deal with this? If you burn someone at the stake as a witch, if she survives, she's not a witch. Or she drowns, sorry, she used Yeah, she drowns. witch is drowned. If she manages to float up, that means she's a witch. And if she drowns, it means she wasn't a witch. <laughs> so you killed her in a, yeah, you yeah. killed her so, for not being a witch. Yes. So uh, basically this dichotomy, you know, this catch-22 situation, you know, you, know, you lose both ways. So was, was that a thought that, you know, every time a woman shows agency, she becomes, you know, somebody who is a trans, who's, who's transgressing and therefore becomes a chudel. So uh, in that, the, the feminist reading of this whole, you know, in a sense, it's, it, is a, it is a movie at the end of the day, which I don't think you mean it to be one, you know, serious uh, blow in, the fa in favor of feminism, but it is there as an undercurrent. So how did you manage to keep that, that pitch low and this, you know, this catch-22 situation which women face? When they show agency, they are, they are you know, witches, and when they don't show agency, they are victims. Victims. I think, uh, uh, Malvika, I'm... Um... I am not personally not an on the nose kind of a person. I, uh, soap boxes for me are just that, they're boxes where soaps are kept. I do not like to climb on top of them. I do not like to scream. That is not me. Uh, so somewhere, I guess, uh, it would have my brand of uh, feminism, or as Rahul calls me, a humanist. You know, so that is, humanism is what I believe in. I don't believe in 
with a strident voice. I, you need to make an effort. I was like, sometimes I tell, I was telling a friend of mine who was saying that, you know, you should speak more and you should, you should say this. I said, you know, uh, this, the biggest change that our country saw was when we got our independence. And uh, one of the quietest voices uh, made it happen. To a large degree, many people made it happen. But uh, Gandhi, if we were to take an example of, I'm not saying I'm a Gandhian pro or anti, but uh, you don't have to scream. You can be heard without screaming. That is my, my way of doing things. And I guess that's why my story has a quieter undercurrent of feminism, very clearly saying what it needs to say without making it into the face of the story. The story is always more important. You have to engage people to be able to talk to them about anything else. First the story and the world and the fairy tale has to draw you in. And then you give all cautionary tales are like that. All your grandmother's tales are like that. You're drawn into the story and then you're given the moral of the story, so to speak. Okay. So before we sign off, because uh, we've been allotted 50 minutes and we're already a little over time. And Rahul oh, apparently has a frenetically busy schedule. So... No, but poor Tripti, we should... Uh, is she coming? I'm, I'm happy I, to stay on. I, I've asked uh, whether she's, she's trying. I believe she's uh, trying and she's got a poor connection. So, no, Mala, uh, I'm happy to stay on. Please. She said she's come. She tried coming in. One second. Let so me sorry go. about this. Our viewers have some questions for her. But one question that's come from Dejani Banerjee is a classic OTT question. Is there a sequel to Bulbu? Is she calling? So what are you going to be, Rahul, in the sequel to Bulbul Triplets? Um, if there is no uh, discrimination and if I'm given my due, then uh, I think I should play Bulbul. Uh, well, and with the almost cast you as Bulbul this time. But do you think, on a more serious note, you know, sometimes stories are complete in themselves and this yeah, of course, Maldita. OTT, you know. Of has... course, Maldita. No, no, no. Look, you have to, whether it's cinema, whether it's uh, OTT, the psychology of a sequel is commercial. The impetus to make a sequel is only commercial. It's never art. It is nostalgia. It is making money out of nostalgia and a feeling of, you know, so it is the weakest form of... Uh, Cinematic, uh, yeah, cinematic, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, expression making, yeah, it is to create a franchise, Maldita. That you like this easy now, you know, the world, you know, everything, therefore, there it comes again for you. I have no problem with sequels, I have a problem with sequels as an actor, like, you know, back to the same world, back to the same thing. It's not been done with the with, with the vision and passion that Anvita has for Bulbul. It'll be like, okay, how do I take this story forward because everybody loves it. And it feeds into a kind of an easy romanticism of, that human beings have and nostalgia and all of that. I love sequels too. Make no mistake. But is it exciting? Will it be fresh? Will it be new? Which sequel can you think of ever in history where you said, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. You saw it coming. Godfather 2 is splendid, but it builds on Godfather 1. And that's the greatest sequel I've ever seen. That's the greatest thing I can ever say for a sequel. But beyond that, that I am now witnessing another moment in Anvita that's oeuvre will not happen with a sequel. And with such a distinctive, unique voice, and some directors never find their voices, as you and I know, and some directors find their voices mid-career, as you and I know, this woman has a distinctive voice. I mean, you're not going to make a mistake you can spot an Anvita that film a mile away from now on. It's my guarantee. It'll have that quiet rage. It will have aesthetics. It will have, a, you know, a very, very well etched performances. You know, you can see the basket of values that this woman is bringing to her filmmaking already. So if that's the case, I think for her to make a sequel anyway would be a waste. Okay, so Anvita, so Devjani Banerjee, when you were trying to find out whether Tripti can join back, asked whether there was going to be a sequel. So I'll change the question for you. 
what next? Do we see Anvita, the filmmaker, spend more time on this or will you go back to some songwriting and, you know, your other film writing? So, uh, I have tasted blood. I was just going to ask you, tasted blood, but I thought I was extending the metaphor too. I was really stretching it. No, but really, I, this, um, I'm already on draft two. Our clean slate is producing it, Dave Danny. I am, uh, the moment it is possible to do so, I will be shooting that film. So I'm already, um, this I'm doing for the rest of my life. This I've found home. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but yes, I will still write songs. I love writing songs. That's my joy. I love doing that. So I'll continue to do it. It's like playing. And I work with my closest friends. I have a lot of fun. It's poetry, it's fun, it's, it's all of that. So it's a skill, it's nice. I love writing songs, so I'll continue to write songs. But I will be a director first. Fantastic. And I'll be waiting on the 14th row of the dancing thing in uh, somewhere for in, that in next Africa. Tour. For the next corner. The luxury liner. He keeps making it sound harder. Why do you keep saying so, luxury liner? I was not on the 14th of the luxury liner. She's, she's I was right there in front dancing badly. She's talking about Dil Dhadak Why do she put me on the 14th row? 14th. Uh, so much dancing he did, the expression and all. What is wrong with you? Snapping. So, uh, is, is my bulbul coming back on screen or has she literally flown the nest? Oh, no, no, sad. she's 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 saying she's trying to join and it keeps cutting. Oh dear. We are trying also from here, my colleague on the tech team. So uh, uh, we'll wait for another five minutes. So if you have any more thoughts on, I one question I really want oh, to I, ask. I, actually, of, I, I would like to talk about Tripti. Yes, I, I would, yes. We um, can talk about, talk about Tripti, that's always lovely. That's a perfect idea, yes. So aside from the fact that it's, it's a double role, actually, aside from the fact that she's a very young actress, she's got all the praise. I just want to add something that only I can add. When you do a scene like the rape, whether Tripti has had an incident in her life or not, it takes you to a dark place. And you could be triggered even through osmosis, through empathy. And it can be a very harrowing experience. It's the last thing any human being wants to be, man, woman, or any gender is to be sexually violated. So we, Anvita, Tripti and I sat together and I only told, I had told Anvita this, so she carried forward the messaging to Tripti, but we were all together to say that I'm going to go to a very dark space and it's going to be very real. Tripti Dimri is here, sorry, sorry. Yeah, she's hi, here, hi, but hi, she's hi. not on screen. Can you hear us? Yes. Oh, yeah. So Sorry, outside I, of the physical, no, no, and we're talking about you only. So I said to her, outside of the physical gymnastics that you have to do in a scene like this to prevent awkwardness and stuff, if you ever, ever feel the slightest bit uncomfortable, triggered, dark, whatever, remember that Rahul is one second away. He's one second away. Just say Rahul and it'll just stop. Of course, Anvita will tell you about her experiences with Tripti, maybe on this scene and other scenes. But during that scene, normally as actors, you get to know the other actor. But during this rape scene, I got to know Tripti as a person. Not because we talked that much. There was a lot of awkward ha hoo ha hoo. <laughs> as I was balancing for her, waiting for the lights to be changed and stuff. But, you know, the nobility the courage, the, the courage, the bravery, um, the, the gratitude, the, the ability to still, to still be graceful and say, thank you, et cetera. And, you know, this is, we're doing this together kind of thing. Um, all of that, I, that's when I really uh, uh, got to know her and I really admire, and it continues. I still admire her for those qualities. It's nobility, it's grace, it's courage. You know, these are, these are beautiful qualities to have as a human being. 
Okay, so I think I logged in at the right time. <laughs> you two questions, so I'll just quickly throw them to you. We're a little out of time. Uh, Netflix had told us 50 minutes and no more, but I hope uh, they'll be kind enough because of the technical problems. So uh, Rahul spoke about one of the two questions I was ha I was going to ask you, which was the difficult scenes of violence, you know. So uh, I know these are spoilers, but, uh, uh, you know, as an actor, how did you approach them? I think for me... Um... Um, I was lucky that I had Rahul sir as my co-actor, you know, because he really, you know, provided me the comfort that I needed at that point in time. I remember I was very nervous um, before going in for those two scenes. And I, um, you know, I, he called me before the shoot and he said, Tripti, just remember that, you know, I'm going to go all out as, a, as an actor because it's my responsibility. It's, it's my job to give my 100% there. But if you ever feel uncomfortable, if you ever feel like you need your co-actor here present with you, if you, you need to talk about anything else or if you need to distract yourself at any point, just just don't think twice before, you know, reaching out to me. Just 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 say Rahul and I'll be there for you. And he, you know, actually was there after every shot, he would just cover me up properly before leaving the set and come sit next to me and talk to me about some random stuff um, just to distract me. And uh, he would, you know, go to the ADs, he would go to the director or to the, you know, producers and tell them, listen, you need to take care of Tripti. You can't just leave her like this. Just check up on her, check if she's okay, if she's comfortable with me here. So I think, uh, you know, just knowing that I have people around me who love me both as an actor and as a human being, just provided me a lot of comfort and gave me the strength to focus only and only on my work and nothing else. Anvita also was extremely sensitive towards me, <laughs> you know, after, I think throughout the shooting process, after every take, she would just come and sit next to me and be like, Chai Piyagi, are you tired? I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this trouble, but just, just uh, know that I'm here for you always. If you ever feel like lost or if you ever feel uncomfortable doing anything, just let me know. So I think I was just in a very safe environment. Um, and uh, as an actor, I think um, a lot of people have asked me this question, did it affect you mentally? Like, were you you know, still living those traumas even after the shoot? But I think it's it's very important to know that when you're in front of the camera, you're acting. And you can't let those emotions affect your own, um, you know, your own emotions, your character's emotion. Because, because you will be getting opportunities to play a lot of characters and live a lot of lives. But you can't let those lives and, you know, uh, affect your own life. So I think that is something that I uh, was clear with from day one. And something that I, uh, you know, make sure that I don't take my character or my craft too seriously. So, yeah, I think all of those that things. Was one of the things we wanted to ask. The other thing was, uh, Anvita said she has tasted blood and uh, now wants to do filmmaking, you know, as the, you know, as her mainstay. So, have you tasted blood as well? And, uh, you know, this kind of a role which had so many shades, has two clear, uh, you know, foils to it. So, uh, I mean, would you now want such roles or sometimes you'd say I really need to do a light happy role where I'm dancing in the 12th row or maybe the, <laughs> or maybe yeah, the first row yeah or alone I think I, I want to do everything I want to dance wearing those chiffon saris as well and I want to do you know roles like this also because I think everything comes with its own challenges and you know I'm at a very early stage of my career and for as of now, it's very important for me to learn the craft. I don't think I've, I'm, you know, good at it as of now. I think I have a lot to learn and different, different genres, different, different roles, they come with their own challenges. Um, so I think it's, it's important for me to explore each and everything as of now. And yes, I think I'm just hopeful that I get, that I keep getting work, um, that I keep getting to, to tell stories that have some meaning, to, to tell stories that can inspire people. And that is the only motive as of now. Yeah. Fantastic. So, Anvita, Rahul, Tripti, sorry, Tripti, we missed you for a few minutes. No, 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 I'm really sorry. My internet was like, no, no, that's fine. I have to from the phone. Uh, you know, to Bulbul and uh, Mahindra Indranil and the the mother of Bulbul. So, uh, thank you all for... I'm actually like her mother. Uh, she is. <laughs> I know, I can sense that, uh, that warmth between the two of you. And indeed, it seems like it was a fun shoot from 
the, yes, yeah. the vibes all around. So thank you. Congratulations for a wonderful film. And those who have not seen it uh, after this conversation, please go to Netflix and watch it. It's less than two hours, which is nice. And uh, it's a movie which is really, you, you may love it, you may like it, and but you won't be indifferent to it. You may even not like it. Like some Bengalis have pointed out some things which we <laughs> talk about like saris and the way it was worn and stuff. But you can't <laughs> please end everyone, but you've influenced everyone to think about it. So congratulations to all three of you. I hope you have another gin party this evening. And... Uh, I hope to host all of you at the Lit Fest when it happens. Kalam happens in Victoria Memorial. So we can shop for saris and... Uh, yes. Yeah, forget about Lit Fest and all, Malvika. Next time I'm <laughs> we are going shopping and we are, you're feeding me food. All right. Fantastic. Great. Yes. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Malika. Malika. Thank you. Lots of love. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.